Let's take a look at this circuit and see if we can determine what's going on. Once again, our approach is going to be to assume that uh, assume a state of the diodes. Either one is on, the other is on, they're both on, they're both off. And then analyze the circuit to see what that assumption would mean or where that assumption would lead. And if we, and in doing so we don't run into any discrepancies, then our assumption or our guess was correct. If on the other hand we run into contradictions, then our assumption was wrong. We need to go back and try it again. So let's take this one right here and let's just assume that both, um, well let's assume that D1 is on and D2 is off. So if D1 is on, the voltage here, an ideal voltage, would tie the voltage V sub B. So let's, let's do it up here. Let's assume D1 is on and D2 is off. That makes then V sub B equal zero. Now if V sub B is zero, I'd have zero volts here, 10 volts here. The voltage the voltage change would be in this direction, which would be forcing D2 on. So this assumption is, is not correct. If D1 is on, D2 is going to be on. So let's just go ahead and assume that, uh, let's assume now that uh, D1 is off and D2 is on. So if that were the case, if D1 is off, this would be an open circuit and the current would be flowing down like this from the positive 10 volts to the negative 10 volts which is in the direction that D2 would satisfy would it would allow but if that's the case let's see what the voltage at here at B would be to do that we need to know what this current is that would be flowing so we'll just go ahead and calculate I um, there's only one current here and that would equal we've got We've got 10 volts here and a negative 10 volts there, so we've got 20 volts difference across 10 plus 5 is 15 kilo ohms. That's going to equal, what is that, 4 thirds of a milliamp. Now with that current, we want to find out what is the voltage here at B. We're wanting to make sure that the voltage here, in order for this assumption to be correct, this voltage here would need to be greater than zero to keep this diode off. So what would the voltage at B be? Well, it would be negative 10 volts plus the voltage drop across here to get us up to V sub B. So V sub B would equal negative 10 plus 5K times 4 thirds of a milliamp. Well, 4 thirds of a milliamp, that's 20 thirds. 10 is negative 30 thirds. So negative 30 thirds plus 20 thirds, that gives us then a negative 10 thirds of a volt for V sub B. Well, if V sub B were negative 10 thirds, that's negative 3.33 volts, and this is zero volts, this diode would be forward biased also. So it's not true that D1 is off and D2 is on, in fact, under both of these assumptions, we've seen that if one's on, the other one's going to be on also. So let's go ahead and assume, then, that both are on or both are conducting. If that's the case, then V sub B, the voltage right here will be zero. If this diode is conducting, we're using an ideal diode, there's no voltage drop across there, this voltage here would be zero. If that voltage there is zero, then ID2, V sub B is zero, ID2 then would just be the 10 volts di minus the zero volts divided by the 10K. 10 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms would give us one milliamp of current. Alrighty, what will the current be here? Well, let's call that, uh, what, I sub 5? I sub 5 would equal 0 minus a minus 10 divided by 5 kilo ohms. That would then be 10 divided by 5. That would be 2 milliamps. 
So if I've got one milliamp here and one milliamp here, we can calculate I. We can do a note equation. One coming in, two going out. That would mean that I would need to be getting one milliamp through there, or I sub D1 would equal one milliamp. Can I sub D equal one milliamp? Sure, the diode's going in the right direction. The diode's coming this direction, allowing current to flow that direction. And certainly you could get one milliamp coming in there. So this assumption that they're both on leads to no, discre to, uh, no dis uh, discrepancies, and that's the correct answer. They are both on. Thus, V is going to be zero volts. Zero volts because it's been tied through this diode here to ground. This diode's conducting. There'll be no voltage drop across there. That voltage there would be ground also.